Hey, what's happening everybody? Dan here with Hangar 88 and we're back. Back with the CYP47. It's been a while since I did a video. I kind of did uh, unorthodox unboxing. Kind of reviewed the model as it was and um, noted some of the stuff that I was gonna do to it and some of the repairs that I did as it was an open box special due to some damages. Um, but anyways, here we are. Since the last time we spoke, I've gone through and filled in all the panel lines that came on the composite fuse because they they just were not, they weren't cool, man. Um, they were nice panel lines, but they just weren't in the right spot. So I, I knew that for the amount of work that I was already going to be putting into it, getting this thing repaired uh, and, and restored, that those were just going to be filled in. And it, as with a lot of these projects, becomes a labor of love. So, um, yeah, I got the body all straight and we're moving forward. I ended up cutting a top hatch here, which I will install. Um, four sides there and then a removable floor inside that little tray and, and i'll house my my fuel line my oil lines uh, power switches and leds all hidden inside there um, i have a nice fiberglass cover that i've made um, prior to cutting the hole so it's conformed to the shape of the fuse up there um, but the biggest reason i wanted to do another video uh, and and do this update was because um I've been getting questions here and there over the past few months about this model and um, so there's there's two two in particular questions that um, we're going to talk about not necessarily the questions just the kind of the, the discussions we had and one was the the engine um, I have a little side note here I've got a jade tech pitch muffler for the DA60 or the GP61CC. It's a wraparound uh, pitch muffler. It's brand new. I've, I bolted it up, um, but it hasn't seen a lick of exhaust through it. So if you guys are looking for one, hit me up. Anyways, that goes back to why I just mentioned my muffler. Running the GP61 on this plane. Um, built my standoffs, and it's a 36 ply standoff. And for it to fit inside the cowl nicely, um, and we're talking forward and back laterally, um, for it to not completely hang out over or past the cowl too much, and the happy medium between the carburetor, if you can kind of see down there, maybe I can get a light here real quick. I'll grab my dad light here. So that carburetor is not quite in there, but it's in there. Um, it does have a stack on it, which I'll probably get rid of. Um, but it, it sits just inside the firewall, which is okay. It is what it is, and I'm not too concerned with that. But because of the spacing that I've had to use in order to have it look good, um, popping out of the front of the cowl, I was not able to find enough room to shove that barrel back here. The barrel of the muffler, there just simply isn't. Which is okay because one of the modifications that I am working on is the semi-scale exhausts. Um, not super scale, but it doesn't look like, back to the other side, some protrude, protruding hunks of fiberglass. So that's got to go. Um, and it's going to look pretty cool. I think so. With that being said, I will have to build a custom exhaust pipe. Straight pipe. Essentially straight pipe. Um, 90 out from the head. Or straight out from the head. 90 over to the rear. 90 behind the rear. And then 90 back into the fuse where then I will create a Y and weld that Y up. That's going to take some math 
and some figuring out but to make a proper why i'll have my buddy who is a an awesome stainless steel welder and yes i am using stainless steel uh, tubing from kns found through chief international um, and then i'll route those pipes out and have functional semi-scale exhausts so that was the biggest thing here uh, matter of fact the gentleman that started this conversation about the muffler uh, was responding to an ad that I had posted on, I think on Facebook Marketplace or um, one of the platforms that I listed this thing on. And he was going to do the same thing. He had the same, he has the same model, the same engine setup. And as we got to talking, I said, well, wait a minute, it's not gonna work out for you. So I thought it was important to show that, um, you know, this is a composite fuselage. So cutting into this wasn't really in my eyes, it, it wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to do that for the sake of the, for the sake of squeezing that in there. I'd much rather just create some straight pipes. Um, and I have, on good knowledge, a gentleman who builds pipes for these motors specifically, and he gave me some dimensions to follow as far as pipe length and using a 25 millimeter tubing. So we're going to take care of that. Um, I was in a mad rush to get this thing ready for a show in October, but I decided to pump the brakes for a couple reasons. Um, so we're just gonna kind of slip it into fourth gear and cruise a little bit, and we're gonna get more of the scale modifications done that I was gonna put aside until a later date, just for the show, but it wasn't that important. The show wasn't. One of them is, you can kind of see it outlined, is the wastegate vents in the rear um those will be functional um, i'll try to post some pictures about it on on facebook or maybe just do another video once i get those going those will be functional and i will i'll figure out how i'm going to have those operated i mean they're going to be operated by servo but whether or not i'm going to have them tied to a certain uh, indicator through my radio system where they'll automatically open and close uh, in different situations or, or have some parameters set for them as well as the cow flaps which brings me to the second talking point of tonight's video it's this hideous nose it's atrocious the front profile of this plane is good up until about here where these things I don't even know what you'd call these but these nubs here help support the cowl and kind of give gives the cowl a purchase point when you mount and then add your fasteners. Functional flaps is something I've always wanted to do on an airplane, but I never really agreed with the method that some guys used where they would essentially mount servos here inside the cowl, hinge the flaps to the cowl, and then run your flex wire or, or laser uh, laser rod, whatever you want to use or call, in there, and have the, it looks cool, but it's to me it, the the integrity of that method just never could stand behind it. There is another system that I came across, and I can't remember the gentleman's name. He did these modifications on uh, several Karf and Meister P47s, and I think some other planes as well, but it's a slick, slick system. And basically, he created a ring that is the profile of the firewall. And this ring would sit on the outside, spaced off of the firewall, obviously with spacers, completely removable if necessary, um, would mount there. At the bottom, he would have two cutouts for servos, the, the cowl flaps would then be cut off of the cowl completely, hinged on top of this existing ring, hinged and mounted there, and then tied into those servos. So the, the cowls would become part of the fuselage. So anytime you took the forward part of the cowl off, which is the checkered part, 
that's all you would that's all that would come off and then of course this bottom chin piece here everything else like you see marked on the inside would stay on the plane which and it's a it's a super super trick setup um, also for cowl mounting you would mount the cowl you'd open up your flaps and mount the cowl um, in here with tabs that would be located here on the cowl anyhow there there's a video out there for it. it's pretty slick there's really no instruction on how to do it but i almost scrapped that idea for a matter, matter of fact for the last couple months i realized that that's probably not gonna happen because of these humps i contemplated cutting cutting this right off but I was also concerned with shortening up the nose and just having it look funky. Until two, maybe two and a half weeks ago, I was contacted via Facebook by a gentleman by the name of Christo. He's from Bulgaria. I believe he found our CY Models page and reached out to me and ordered the same exact model. And his first thoughts were very similar to mine. He had bigger cojones than I did. And if you go on the CY page, you'll see that he took and just lopped off the friend end of this plane. I think he's crazy. But he's brilliant. I'm following, I'm following his lead. I'm gonna ride his coattails on this project. He is a super nice guy. We've been talking ideas back and forth for the last couple weeks. Um, another thing he also did, which kind of opened my eyes, he took a scale three view of the P-47 and blew them up to this one sixth scale airplane. Again, this is posted on the CY group models group page on Facebook. And he laid the fuselage down on this scale print. And it was evident that this nose right here, this section right here of this model is too long. The fuselage versus the plans. The fuselage was about two inches too long or roughly 54 millimeters. However you want to spin that. But it was it's too long. So... That was his motivation to just lop it off. Um, I had a few things kind of holding me from doing that prior to. One, I'm not very good with CAD. And the execution would have taken me a little bit longer because of that and having to work everything by hand. So at that point, I kind of evaluated and weighed the reward versus labor um, and I kind of shied away from it meeting Hristo these last couple weeks and seeing his confidence and then actually actually seeing him cut and lob that nose off um, and his willingness to essentially help me through it um, has made this project a go and so we'll be ripping off the motor again and we're gonna be lobbing off this nose here and uh, and we're going for it. And what that will do is once once this is gone, we'll create that that flap ring, which will then put everything more into a scale position, and we'll have functional flaps. So pretty pretty cool. I'm super excited about that. Um, like I said, it was originally one thing I wanted to do, and then kind of became discouraged when. Um, I just, you know, I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. And I didn't even think to taking these and putting them to a scale plan or even measuring, measuring and doing, just doing the math. Didn't think of doing that. And, um, you know, working up close to this thing every day, you don't really know. Sometimes you don't see like, hey, that's, that's just too long. Anyhow, so that's going to happen. And I'm excited about that. And that should be happening very soon. I am excited because I am... Um, I'm currently waiting on a small tabletop laser right now, which will allow me to cut, you know, the firewall out and the ring and these, you know, smaller components. This isn't some big 
big old 150 watt CO2 laser. It's just a tabletop diode laser, but um, pretty confident that it's going to allow me to do some pretty cool stuff with um, for these models. Um, so I know a lot of people don't like the the canopy. Um, it isn't that scale, and the the hatch. You know, it's just one of those things. It's very shallow here, super shallow. You could probably get away with putting a little instrument panel in there, and then definitely a bust, which I'll probably do just for for giggles. But let me pull this sucker off. One second close up. All right. That was hard to do. What I needed. The inside of this bad boy. Um, so the mounting plate here for all the servos and your electronics is like super thin ply. Um, and, and it'll crack and, and make noise when you apply a little bit of pressure onto it. So I, I've gone through and up here where the batteries are going to mount, um, I cut a plate out and cut the servos out of there um, for my throttle and my choke. So that's going to work out nicely. Both arms run nice here. Um, so I know that that's going to work out even when I do the firewall mod modification. Um, the fuel cavity in here is a bit cumbersome when you're trying to get, uh, I don't know if cumbersome is the right word, maybe awkward. Um, when you're trying to put a 32 ounce fuel tank in there, um, it, it's very difficult to get your hands back here. Um, shove my hand through the little hatch and run some straps to secure that sucker down. Um, so uh, in, in a previous post, I did post a picture of a skid mount that I made. This skid mount here, um, I 3D printed. Uh, it'll have my fuel, whoop, fuel, 32 ounce, and then a 16 ounce of oil. And then I can even house my power box smoke pump right there. And these two tabs here, Whoops. Those two tabs there will slide in up here. I will glue this down. And they'll slide right in there. And I'll develop uh, a little plate here where I can put a couple three millimeter bolts in with some blind nuts. And that way I can take the fuel tanks in and out. I know that they're, they're gonna be secure make my connections and slide them in and, and be done with. I uh, found a good spot for the CDI up front. Um, but with the, the removal of the firewall now and the firewall modification, that's all gonna get pulled out. We're gonna, we're gonna delete this and I'll probably just laser cut um, a different plate, something a little stronger and just kind of reevaluate this here and make sure that we're still going to want to, probably still going to want to go with the skid skid mount um, but now we will be pushing it back a little ways so might have to move around some things which i'm not afraid of um, and then also to allow me to get down in there um, and get to those scale exhaust sections there so anyhow um, i'll come back and reinforce these here as well um, and when i reinforce i'm going to be building a system that will allow me to add a couple of elevated servos to be able to mount my wastegates here. So pretty exciting stuff now. I've, I've kind of, like I said, uh, Haristo has reignited um, the motivation, the ideas, the scale ideas that I originally wanted to do, but then backed away from um, due to time constraints. But for what? I mean, I, I was trying to get this ready for a show and it, it's not like it was Top Gun. Um, do I want to fly it? Yeah, I'm a super excited to fly it because I don't think anybody's told me that this is a bird that flies like crap. Everybody who's flown the CY model has said that it has been a very, very sweetheart of a bird and it flies super well. Um, have done a lot of modifications to the wings. Um, those are up in the wing bag right now. Um, next video I'll do 
I will see if uh, see if I remember to throw those in. But right now, I think the main focus is going to be lopping the nose off, getting the nose cut off, and re, uh, re redoing that whole front end. So, anyhow, um, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Um, little side note, since the last time we spoke, I have become the brand ambassador for RTL fasteners. I mean, if you're serious in the hobby, you've probably at the very least have heard of RTL fasteners. They have virtually everything, every fastener you need to um, get these birds assembled, built, servo secured. They're, they're, we're very, very... Um, prideful in our servo screws they have a thousand uses um and and so yeah we carry carry a bunch of stuff um let's see let's dig down here in the box let's dig down here in the rto box um so they immediately sent me the master 5000 kit and so here's the four millimeter assortment um four by 35 millimeters 25s and 16s there um some blind nuts lock nuts lock washers regular washers standard nuts so there's there's uh four millimeters there's number eight number fours Let's see what else we got in here got Two millimeter and 2.5 millimeter. Sorry about the lighting, guys. It's all the planes hanging up on the ceiling. We got some number two and number zero fasteners here. Um, little brass screws there. Awesome, awesome screws. Um, button head screws for sure. Button head screws have become my favorite for cowl mounting. They're clean. Um, you, you pair them up with a uh, more teen nuts. You pair them up with a rubber backed washer and they make for an excellent cow, cow mounting option. There. Master kit also includes the three millimeter and then number six hardware and then assorted um, T nuts and more bonded washers for four of those sets there little guys right there they're cute and of course they're going to throw in a magnet for you because some of these screws are pretty small um, and also can't forget the infamous servo screw these things are bad they're awesome they work great um, I don't honestly don't think in the last 10 years of flying RC that I have l left the Phillips screws that come with most servos in a model. Um, and that was in the beginning. I may have put them in there and then quickly replaced them as soon as I got some, some of the um, servo screws. Uh, but now it, I exclusively exclusively use those servo mounting screws they're just they're, they're a lot better they don't strip um and and they make life easier and, and um until the button head screws i used to use those on my cowl as well and uh cowls i use them on here's the my fuck wolf but for hatch covers i use those um to full disclosure I didn't use those. Those were already on there, but um, yeah, they just make life easier. So anyways, with all that being said, uh, RTL fasteners, uh, I am the brand ambassador for them. So if you use code FF25, Fireflight25, again, that's FF25, you can save yourself 25% on purchases of $25 or more. So go use that code. Order yourself some cool stuff. Along with fasteners, they do have um, a few different varieties of Bondus ball 
ball drivers, nut drivers, and screw drivers, and they have long handle drivers, they have standard um, length drivers, but good stuff. And again, they, they have a lot of cool stuff. So anyways, check them out, RTL fasteners. Anyways, um, I think that's it for tonight. Hopefully it won't be too long um, for this, the next update on the CYP 47 project. So, hey, thanks for watching. And if you've liked what you've seen here today, please hit that like button and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.